The Honourable Member for Essex. Madam Speaker, I'll be splitting my time with the member for North Island Powell River. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to speak in support of today's Opposition Day motion brought forward by my colleague, the Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. He's also the New Democrats' newly minted finance critic, and I congratulate him on the appointment. And based on the debate that he's brought forward today, I know he will do a terrific job as our finance critic. The motion we are debating today is very straightforward, and I would hope the Liberal government will support it. It's a two-part motion. It calls on the government to address tax loopholes and to crack down on the use of tax havens. It's about enforcing the basic principle that every Canadian should pay their fair share of taxes. It's about tax fairness. I'm not suggesting that the current tax system is a model of fairness, but what we do know is that far too many of the wealthiest Canadians are shirking their responsibilities to pay their taxes and in some cases are going to extraordinary and even criminal lengths to avoid paying them at all. A few years ago, Warren Buffett famously claimed that he was paying a lower tax rate in the U.S. than his secretary. It goes to show how many loopholes exist for the wealthiest in society. In Canada, the stats are staggering. Canada's top CEOs earn 193 times the average person's salary. Two Canadian billionaires possess the same amount of wealth as nearly a third of Canadians, 33.1 billion US dollars. Canada's richest CEOs earn the same in half a day as the average Canadian worker earns in a year. What New Democrats are suggesting here today is not radical. All we're saying is that the government needs to tighten up the rules and crack down on these tax loopholes and tax havens that are allowing the super rich to avoid paying their fair share. According to the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, there are about 59 tax measures that mostly benefit people above the average income level, which cost the government more than $100 billion in foregone tax revenue. These loopholes significantly undermine the government's ability to provide funding for key priorities like improving health care and seniors care, investing in affordable housing and public transit, or even launching an affordable child care system and national pharmacare plan. Two ideas that would go so far in building a stronger, healthier Canada. I think about what these programs would mean in my riding of Essex. They would improve the quality of life and affordability of life for so many families and individuals. In the last election, we talked a lot about the stock option deduction loophole. In most of Canada, profit from stock options is considered to be a capital gain and therefore taxed at half the rate of regular income. Many companies offer stock options to their employees as an incentive in their compensation packages. This tool was initially designed to help raise money for startups and expansion, but now it's being primarily used by Canada's wealthiest. Stock options now make up about 25% of CEO compensation at Canada's top 60 publicly traded companies. This costs federal and provincial governments close to $1 billion every year in foregone revenue. The Liberals know this to be true. In 2011 and in 2015, their platforms acknowledged these very facts. Both the New Democrats and the Liberals campaigned on closing up the stock option deduction loophole. But here we go again, another promise made by the Liberals that apparently they never meant to keep. The other week at the International Trade Committee, we had the pleasure of hearing from the Minister of Small Business, who discussed what her government is doing to support more small businesses with accessing international markets. I asked her about the Liberals' campaign promise to reduce the small business tax. She referred to it as a great sound bite, but said it wasn't a good idea anymore. Her comment struck me as very cynical, Madam Speaker, and certainly not what I'm hearing from those in my riding of Essex. When parties make election promises, like reforming the electoral system, lowering the small business tax rate, or closing up the stock option deduction loophole, Canadians expect the government to deliver not to turn their back and later scoff at the very premise of these commitments. The Liberals are breaking campaign promises left and right. It's shameful. I'm worried that after four years of this Liberal government, Canadians will be even more cynical about politics than they were after 10 years of the Conservative government. After promising to fully tax individual stock options exceeding 100000 during the last election campaign, after forming government, the Liberals announced they'll leave it untouched. We've now learned of intense lobbying 
by Bay Street CEOs who benefit greatly from this measure to keep this loophole open. Both Liberals and Conservatives have now claimed that closing the stock option loophole would hurt small businesses and startups, arguing that they'd not be able to give employees stock options as an incentive to help companies grow. But closing the stock option loophole does not mean that companies would not grant stock options as compensation. Startups could still offer comp stock options to attract and retain employees, but those employees would just have to pay fair tax on the income, the same rate that normal Canadians pay on their income, rather than receiving a 50% discount. When we talk about loopholes and tax evasion, we're not talking about Canadians putting their money into RSPs or TFCAs, TFSAs, pardon me. We're talking about off the book, illegal schemes like the one cooked up by KPMG to hide Canadians' money in offshore accounts. The second part of today's motion calls on the government to take aggressive action to tackle tax havens. I think the key word here is aggressive. It means tightening the rules for shell companies, renegotiating tax treaties that let companies repatriate profits from tax havens to Canada tax-free, and it means ending penalty-free amnesty deals for individuals suspected of tax evasion. This isn't just a tax issue. It's about cracking down on white-collar criminals. The government talks about the size of CRA's budget for going after tax evaders, but we still haven't seen any criminal charges. It's clear the government must do more to tackle tax cheats, who are robbing Canadians of billions of dollars of revenue that is sorely needed to improve our communities. Canada is lagging behind other G7 countries in tackling tax havens. The previous Conservative government eliminated 3,000 jobs in CRA in the unit that was responsible for detecting tax evaders, including the jobs of hundreds of auditors and 50 highly trained managers. This is a perfect example of why ideologically driven budget cuts can be so short-sighted. The Finance Department's own numbers show a $10 return for every dollar invested in combating international tax evasion and aggressive tax avoidance. The Liberal government has made new investments in CRA, which are welcomed, but this isn't a silver bullet solution. Instead, it's a starting off point in a larger conversation about how we tackle this complex problem. I've already talked about many elements of an aggressive, effective strategy to combat tax loopholes and tax havens. Another policy that I'd like to draw my colleagues' attention to is the impact of drastic cuts to the corporate income tax. The Conservatives cut the rate by one-third, from 22 to 15 percent over six years, and the Liberals have kept it at this very low level, which is even lower than the U.S. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has said that these corporate tax giveaways cost the government $12 billion annually. Evidence shows that the Conservatives' drastic cuts have not boosted investment or led to the promised job creation. Again, we have another ideologically driven decision that hasn't led to economic growth and job creation. It's just been a massive tax giveaway. Its only real impact has been to deplete the government of tax revenues that could be used to build better health care, community infrastructure, and other urgent priorities in Canada. The Liberals promised change for everyday people. They promised policies that would build a fair economy that lifts everyone up, not just those at the top. Canadians are increasingly frustrated that the Liberals are failing to deliver. Instead, we're seeing business as usual. Instead of listening to the voices of everyday Canadians, the Liberals are listening to the loudest voices in the room, the ones of the lobbyists and well-connected insiders who look out for the interests of the wealthiest CEOs and corporations. As a new Democrat and as the Member of Parliament proudly representing Essex, I want to be a voice for the hard-working people who have been left behind by an economy that excludes too many. I want to fight for a Canada that works for everyone, not just the wealthy and the well-connected. Today, New Democrats are calling on the Liberal government to ensure CEOs and big corporations pay their fair share. I hope all honourable colleagues will join me in voting yes to this motion. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires?